mission Beaming from the mountain top Using horror ammunition With extreme prejudice What's up guys? Gorilla Geek here. This is a review of the Chinese made TYT company model THUVF1 dual band transceiver dual band meaning VHF and UHF transceiver uh, this is primarily marketed towards the uh, public safety agencies police EMS fire but this could also be used in the amateur service along with GMRS I believe it cannot be used in FRS because the antenna is detachable so that rules that out not used in FRS and it cannot be used in mirrors on the VHF high band frequencies because you could put this on high power and high power on this is 5 watts so this rules it out for FRS I believe but it's capable it's capable of doing FRS frequencies and it's capable of doing Muir's frequency it's capable of doing GMRS frequencies the ham band 150, 136 megahertz all the way up to 169 and 420 all the way up to 475 I believe now if you're looking for a inexpensive high value radio this will do the trick for you because uh, it was really cheap for the capabilities that these radios could provide averaging a hundred bucks for each radio uh, they were so inexpensive that I decided to get two for the family one for myself and one for the household here and uh, high value I mean you can't get any cheaper than that I purchased these two radio radios through a uh, American distributor called Cato Communications. Uh, I like dealing with uh, American distributors because they can answer my di my questions directly, which they did. I had some questions about this model, and uh, just ease of transaction because they're American. Uh, there's no loss of translation because you're dealing with another foreign country or anything like that. So. Uh, that's that's what I like about going through American distributors. Uh, these parts over here, I got it through Lentini Communications. Uh, so that's another American distributor in the East Coast somewhere. But uh, I went through the American distributors just for ease of mind. I'm endorsing these two companies, uh, Cato Communications and Lentini Communications because um, their service was quick to the point no fuss purchased the equipment they were knowledgeable about their gear and uh, that's it pretty much I'm not getting no kickbacks whatsoever they don't even know that I'm doing a review about this stuff uh, it's just a company that, that I went through it worked for me and hopefully if you decide to get this radio it would work for you so that is it no kickbacks no nothing I'm getting no uh, preferential treatment or, or anything it's not about that at all now the Chinese are flooding the markets with these uh, radios here uh, this is marketed as a part 90 radio which is primarily geared towards uh, public safety agencies the cops EMS firefighters but it has sort of like a ham radio uh, side to it as well you could actually input your ham frequencies or any frequencies for that matter and what this radio is designed for uh, into this uh, they call it a part 90 radio because through the software they could actually lock that feature out where you can't enter your frequencies in this anymore for instance one and uh, it's already on there I could, I could transmit on this frequency if I want that's a weather service but uh, it could also be blocked out as well and that's I guess that's how they get away with uh, uh, marketing this as a part 90 radio now this radio here is perfect for the volunteer Vol volunteer firefighters volunteer 
search and rescue personnel, ham radio operators that volunteer their services to uh, agencies when a disaster hits, uh, great for personal communications, uh, to communicate with your family or whatever, especially if you have a ham license, this is perfect. Uh, and and personnel that 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 works for public safety agencies that that want something to take home with them or have in their personal possession that they could use and use legally with the agencies that you're working for or affiliated with and that what makes this great little radio uh, a godsend in a way well it's undermining American and European uh, companies out there like Kenwood and and Icom, Motorola, because a hundred bucks gets you the same capabilities or close to the same capabilities as those radios. Not as rugged as those other radios, but for the volunteer or or, or whoever, uh, something affordable that they could use. Now here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Amateur, Yesu. VX7R. Slightly bigger. Magnesium alloy case, plastic case. A hundred bucks though. A hundred bucks. I brought this for 275. BK radio, only one band. Um, part 90 radio. This is a part 97 radio, I believe. Uh, but the part 90 radio this BK GPH commander retails for about $750 one band VHF magnesium alloy case pretty big tough very tough so is the VX7R plastic but it does all the frequencies that this guy does and this guy a hundred bucks for one. Motorola, what can I say? You, you add those uh, bat wings on on um, on the uh, radio, the price <laughs> goes up. <laughs> this guy right here retails for about, I think around fifteen hundred bucks. It's a P twenty five eight hundred megahertz radio. They have uh, VHF versions of this and UHF versions of this, and the price is up there. I mean, it's a Motorola plastic case but really tough uh, plastic a lot of capabilities one band uh, and it's an upgrade or an optional feature to be able to input your own frequencies through the front uh, face plate but that's an added charge this one it already comes open it's not an added feature it's, it's already built in you could you could do that a hundred bucks, fifteen hundred bucks. This is old, but just for comparison reasons. So I brought two of these for the family and one for myself to take out to the field. Just to show you the comparison between the two. And like I said, a lot of capabilities on this. So far, this has the most capabilities of those Chinese radios that are being flooded in the market. Now, this is my chess harness. And I usually carry my uh, BK radio in it. And the second pouch here is for phones, GPS, or whatever. I usually used to keep my uh, this radio in there and wrap it up. So pretty soon I'm going to retire this guy and my TYT is going to take its place if it fits in there just right as a backup radio or for my purposes uh, field testing just as a comparison. Okay let's dive into specifics. Antennas. On this model here unlike some other Chinese manufactured radios the connector is an SMA connector here female with a protruding threaded uh, barrel there I guess and that is more in line with the amateur radios that, that you'll see out there the uh, amateur handhelds 
For instance, for example, this uh, Yesu VX7R has the standard amateur uh, connector there. And it's pretty much standard for the amateur service. And here's uh, an amateur antenna. And I could actually stick this amateur antenna onto this TYT radio here. Now for the Part 90 radios, public service agencies, it's different, it's reversed. Here's a Motorola radio with a sunken SMA uh, connector on there. The opposite of the TYT radios. And here's a, a more modern Motorola radio. So if you use uh, Motorola parts or whatever, it, it's not compatible. You would have to get an antenna that has the reverse uh, uh, antenna jack to it. So that's one difference. But if you're an amateur guy, it'll work for you. Now these three antennas should be identical. And if you notice, two of the white inner core that came with the radios uh, perform somewhat mediocre. This red band, the one with the uh, red innards there, I got that from another vendor as a spare and it outperformed the other two. So uh, Chinese uh, manufacturing is really not that consistent as far as these antennas, but they'll do. I mean, and it's not, a, I don't think it's a true wideband antenna where you could go from uh, 136 all the way up to 175 megahertz and, and on a UHF range to span the whole, the whole range. But uh, it will suffice.